It's a bright and warm day today. It's actually really sunny and even though it's windy, the temperature is in its 90 degrees in terms of Fahrenheit or over 35 degrees when it comes to degrees Celsius. So you can say it's a hot day. It's a good thing I'm not wearing my leather jacket, right? Because if I were, I would probably not be doing too well. Just like I would not do too well wearing just a shirt or just a t-shirt in the middle of the winter. We dress appropriately for each season. Speaking of seasons, we have two major seasons, right? Spring and fall are basically transitional seasons, but let's just say we have two major se seasons. It's either hot or it's cold. It's either summer or it's winter. Same thing goes for investment. I wouldn't dress the same way for different temperatures. Why would I invest the same way in different seasons of investing? My name is Laksh Bell and today we're talking about seasons of investing. Let's get started. So we can say there are two major seasons of investing, right? We talk about general investment principles and they'll tell you gather assets, sacrifice and save, don't increase your expenses beyond you need to and then save, invest, gather assets, increase the asset side of your balance sheet. That is good advice but is it consistently good advice? It's obviously not going to be the best advice for all seasons simply because it just doesn't seem to be working right now, right? Is it working too well for you? Probably not if you're trying that out. Let's take another piece of advice. Stay out of debt, stay clear of debt, right? They tell you always to stay clear of debt. Is that universally good advice? Is that advice that works well at all periods of time, at all se during all seasons of investing? I'm not sure it is, okay? So let's talk about the different seasons of investing. Just like we have hot and cold in the real world, in the physical world, we have a good season for building assets or focusing on the asset side of your balance sheet and a bad season for focusing on the asset side, which would be a good season to focus on the liabilities side. In other words, what I'm saying is you can get rich or incredibly wealthy by focusing on the liabilities side of your balance sheet instead of the asset side depending upon what season it is season of investing it is that is now seasons of investing are not annual just like your physical seasons are these things normally take several decades okay so when you are so that is why you might have noticed the advice from let's say 1980s or 1970s sacrifice and save stay clear of debt try not to get in any debt at all use your savings to buy assets hope they appreciate right that advice just doesn't seem to work very well right now because we are in the winter of investing instead of the summer of investing. Right now is the time when debt can be a real friend of yours. Here's why. We live in what we call or what I call an, a hyper inflationary economy. Money is being printed non-stop, right? Uh, you, no matter where you are, no matter what country you live in, by the way, we are almost universally dependent upon or contingent upon or directly correlated to the US dollar, which is a fiat currency. And even if your country's currency is not US dollar, your currency is also fiat and is largely related, related to the US dollar. Now, since 2008, the monetary base of the United States has gone from roughly $800 billion to over $4.5 trillion. Let me say that again. The monetary base of the United States has gone from $800 billion to $4.5 trillion since 2008. Now, let me ask you this. In the last 10 years, did the economy or the productivity of the economy go up by a thousand percent or 900 percent? It did not, right? Or even 500 percent? It did not. 
but the monetary base has risen by five to six times. What that means for you is that your money is worth less today than it was yesterday and especially than it was 10 years ago. And we'll talk about a concept called the net present value in my next video where I'll discuss the mathematical implications of this and the practical implications of money being devalued. But there are two kinds of economies, one in which your currency is relatively stable. Right? That's one season of investing and a different set of principles applies to that season of investing. And then we have the season like this one, where money is hyperinflationary, currency is just being printed non-stop. They just print currency as, as if they have no, you know, they just, in today's world, they want to solve all problems by just printing more money, but you can't print your way to prosperity, right? So if you are looking to get wealthy on account of just the same principles, on account of just increasing your assets, you're probably going to be waiting a long time. But if you start paying attention to the liabilities side and understand how debt can become your friend, then this is the time to become incredibly wealthy. In a stable economy, the transfer of wealth is relatively low. In an unstable, inflationary season of investing, the one we have, there's an enormous transfer of value or enormous transfer of wealth going on, whether you like it or not, and you're on one side. Either you're losing money by following the principles that no longer work, or you're becoming incredibly wealthy simply because you're on the right side of the equation. In my upcoming videos, we'll talk about the best principles for investing in this hyperinflationary economy. But for now, understand that it's probably not your fault that things are not working the way they're supposed to and the way they suppose they were working 20 years ago for you or your father or 40 years ago for your grandfather because it's just not the same thing we just don't live in the same environment right and that's it for today I just wanted you to understand that just like I wouldn't be wearing flip-flops and g-strings if I'm going to Siberia in the middle of the winter right because I'd be dead you can probably end up dead financially if you keep following the same financial principles that were successful in a different season of investing but they but but that do not work or apply any longer my name is Lakshbel I'll see you soon